Are you ready for chapter five and six of Towers Falling? Deja's attitude changed a little bit when Ben and Sabine shared lunch and they stood around the map and Deja realized there are kids from all over, all different heritages, all different nationalities, all different life happenings. I think she's feeling a little more comfortable in her school. So let's see, chapters five and six. Avalon Family Residence has daycare. It's supposed to help parents find jobs. I pick up Raymond, who has green finger paint on his shirt, and Lita, who sucks her pink pacifier. I take the pacifier away. Lita wails, Deja, Deja. Okay, okay, but you're almost three. Not care, says Lita, sucking the rubber loud and furious. I lift Lita onto my hip. I grab Raymond's hand. Why didn't you wear an apron? I painted a monster. Pop's going to shout monster when he sees how dirty you are. Ray's face droops and Lita stops sucking. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have scared them. Pop doesn't hit, but he's still scary when he's mad and he can be mad about anything. Coffee too cold, rain or no rain, wind too little or too much, even paint on a shirt. When something needs cleaning, Ma, tired, looks at me. I clean the mess, but I don't mind. Here, I've got a cookie. I pull it out of my pocket. It all crumbles. Ray and Lita don't care. We sit on the steps outside Avalon Family Residence. There's no air conditioning inside, and even though the sun beats on us hard, we'll stay on the steps until Ma gets home. The question comes to mind. Why do you think they want to stay outside till mom comes home? Pop might be upstairs, but he might be dreaming hard, his head hurting like it's going to explode. It's best to stay outside. No one soothes Pop better than mom. Me, I watch over Ray. He leaps up and down the steps with some other boys. I watch to make sure he doesn't get hurt, doesn't get bullied. There are all kinds of folks knowing about our doors, some indoors, some curse, some just talk, all kinds of families, small ones, large ones, all colors, without an apartment or house. Some are clean, but a bit shabby, like me, Ray, and Lita. A few are a mess, dirty, and stinky. Loud noises, I'm glad Pop doesn't drink. No one's supposed to drink at Avalon. I pat Lita's head. You want a story? Avalon's kind of a scary place in a way, yet it's the only shelter they have. Lita snuggles onto my lap like a baby doll. Lenyap, I say. Long, long time ago, before cars and buses and streetlights and houses, the, Len the Lenyap lived in New York. They own the whole place. Can you believe that, Lita? Lita stops sucking. The pacifier rests in her lap. She claps her hands and squeals. I tickle her belly, then hug her tight and rock. Hey, Ray, I wave. He smiles. I'm happy. Today was a good day. The next chapter is Friday. School is like school, except it's harder. It's only been four days and my mind is already stuffed. Miss Garcia doesn't yell. She's stern but soft and nice too. She doesn't just point to the whiteboard and say, see, see. She explains hard things like reducing fractions and turning them into decimals. Decimals are fractions even when they're not. I sometimes don't care. Math is tough and I feel dumb and get upset. She walks between desks, watching us work. When she stops and whispers to me how to fix a problem, I get more upset. Tears fill my eyes and I really can't see. I think how her whispers are telling all the other kids that I'm stupid. She moves on, walking to the end of our row. Ben stares, owl-eyed, behind his round wire glasses. Who are you looking at? I whisper fierce. He smiles and offers me a big pink eraser. I want to throw it at his head. After school, 
I'll show you. It's, please don't say easy, I think. I'll smack him if he says easy. It's, it's hard. Until you remember decimals are just a fraction of a 100. Miss Dyer would like this, wouldn't she? I take the eraser. Miss Garcia says, think critically. Think what? What's memorable about New York? Everybody starts raising hands, shouting, the Rockettes, the Empire State Building, the Rockefeller Center, horses in Central Park. I've seen horses and carriages in Central Park, but I don't know Rockette. What is that? I've never seen the Empire State Building up close or visited Rockefeller Center. Oh, oh, pick me. Yes, Charles, answers Miss Garcia. Charles has black slick hair and long lashes. He grins and looks back at Ben. The naked cowboy. Underpants, boots, and a cowboy hat. Everyone laughs except Ben and me. Don't make fun of Ben, I shout. I'm standing fist balled and Ben sits. He doesn't even know when he's been disrespected. Just because Ben wears cowboy boots doesn't mean you can make fun of him. There, I've made everyone shut up. They all look at me, scared, respectful. Sabine, though, just looks sad. Miss Garcia clicks, clicks her heels down the aisle. She puts a hand on my shoulder. I don't know why, but I notice that her nails are pink. Like pink nails are important or something. Deja, it's true. There really is a naked cowboy in Times Square. Tourists take pictures with him. Well, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's true, repeated Ben. When we moved here, my mother took me to Times Square. I'm really dumb. All I know is Brooklyn, mainly the not so nice parts. I've never crossed the river except once, the long, a day, long ago day in Central Park. There's also Big Bird, Minnie Mouse, and SpongeBob. Really? Sabine nods. Miss Garcia nods, everybody nods, even Ben, who's just moved to New York. Well, I've lived here my whole life. I look into Miss Garcia's mournful eyes. I can tell she doesn't want me to say I'm sorry, but I would if she asked me to. She squeezes my shoulder. Class, I want to show you something. Miss Garcia walks back to her desk and I sit. No one looks at me anymore. Ben passes me a note. Thanks, it says. I stuff his note in my pocket. Now, class, study this. It's a black and white poster-sized picture of New York. Anybody can see that. It's not Brooklyn. It's Manhattan. You can see the East River. And right across the river are hundreds of tall buildings, some shooting straight, piercing the clouds, others not as tall, close, close the gaps between skyscrapers. Nothing but a hodgepodge of brick, glass, and concrete. What do you see? Buildings, lots of buildings. Can't see over them, can't see under them, can't see through them, Ben says. Sabine giggles and everybody else laughs. Going on a bear hunt, says Ben, as if that's supposed to make sense. How many of you know the book, Going on a Bear Hunt? But see, Deja doesn't have those connections. These other children have connections of saying things they've sightseen in New York, but Deja doesn't have that. I squirm in my chair. I don't belong here. There's too much I don't understand. The kids are weird. The school is weird. Now class, come over to the windows. Everyone clamors up, including Ben. Not me. I slouch. What do you see? That's a dumb question, I think. Maybe the school isn't so special after all. Maybe Miss Garcia isn't special. Everyone leans against the windows. Sabine breathes on the glass and draws a heart. Pay attention, said Miss Garcia. What do you see? New York, some kids murmur. Others say, Manhattan. A sunny day in Manhattan. Think, see, and compare. Miss Garcia holds the poster picture high, high above her short head. Everybody keeps staring out the windows, even Miss Garcia. 
She's breathing quick like she's upset, like she can't get enough air. I get up, stare at the poster, and then I see it. Two tall and taller buildings. I stand speechless, pointing at the wall of windows. It's Ben who hollers, the two towers. The two towers are gone. Now everyone sees. The skyline's changed. The two rectangular towers in the photo are gone, replaced by one glittering tower with a pointy top pricking the sky. Where'd they go, I asked. Some kids look strangely at me. It's terrible, murmurs Sabine. Terrible, echoes Angel. She's the pretty girl, black hair, blue eyes, and pink lip gloss. But she's nice. Even I have to admit, she's nice. She's pretty, but doesn't act like it. Doesn't act like snotty and better than everyone else. Some of you know, says Miss Garcia. Know what? I wonder. See, Deja's asking questions. Michael bends, untying, then tying his Nikes again and again. Angel picks at her nails. Another kid crosses his arms over his chest. I do the same when I don't want anyone to touch me. Others are looking wide-eyed, maybe scared of Miss Garcia. Nobody talks about it. Not really, says Michael. Talks about what? Missing buildings? This Sunday is the 15th anniversary, Ben says. That's right, Ben. What anniversary, I ask? My cousin died, murmured Angel. It was just a big accident, wasn't it? Mom says not to talk about it, sighs Elise, twirling hair around her finger. Voices pop about the room like an action movie, just boom, boom, boom. Miss Garcia shoots Gregory a look. Inappropriate, she says. People died, I ask, puzzling. Everyone's chattering. Everybody knows something different. I don't know anything. Come to attention now, and everyone quiets. Miss Garcia has a stern face. We'll be studying what happened on September 11, 2001, when the towers fell. Hands stuffed in his back pockets, trying to be cool, Trevor shouts, Who cares? 9-11 was before I was born. Ben scowls. Miss Garcia wrings her hands. There's a great deal to think about and to learn. I think Trevor's right. Before I was born, it's ancient history. It's enough figuring out now. Who cares is right. Muslims did it, said Pete, who wears a Yankees cap. That's not true, insists Sabine. I mean, it is, but it isn't true. Miss Garcia clutches Sabine's hand. For now, we'll start slow. We'll study and we'll observe. One day we'll cross the Brooklyn Bridge to visit the memorial. A field trip, asked George. Yes, maybe. Miss Garcia turns away from the windows. This is a new challenging lesson plan. One step at a time, she pastes on a smile. Today we start with home and what we know. As homework, I want each of you to write and show where you live, your house or your apartment. You can draw a picture using building, build using sticks or clay. Mrs. Campbell, the art teacher, has supplies and she's happy to work with you during art class and after school. Why is home important? Miss Garcia asks hopefully. The nerd at the window? I shouldn't call him a nerd, but he's white with an afro and thick black glasses. Plus he's got a black silver buckled belt and white tennis shoes. He looks like a nerd to me, super smart. He says, home, it's where we come from. It's who we are. Good, Ellis. Home shapes all of us. So let's share our homes, where we live. Let's create, talk, and write about who we are. Murmurs of happiness. Nobody minds this assignment, I think, except me and Trevor. The bell rings and school's over. Deja, may I see you? Asks Miss Garcia. Ben asks, want me to wait? I think, who are you? Why should I care? I dip my head, my chin touching my chest. The hardest for, word for me to say is please. Being poor, you've sometimes got to ask for stuff, food, 
toothpaste, even soap. I don't want to ask anybody for anything. Yes, please, I swallow. But don't think I like you. I know, says Ben. I don't like you either. Miss Garcia is beautiful. Not like a model beautiful, but her hair is shiny, her skin is bright, and from inside her you can feel she wants to help. Like she believes teaching is helpful, not babysitting. Like who I am matters. I'm only used to Ma believing me like that. Deja, you live in Avalon, right? My body's hot. I want to slap the desk, slap maybe even Miss Garcia. Yes, ma'am, I murmur. You can draw, create the space where you lived before. You don't need to write about Avalon. The time before, I whisper. Yes, she says. Do you remember where Deja was the time before? Remember, they lived in a car for a month before they moved to Avalon? Well, no thank you. I'll draw a picture of where I live now. It's my home. I almost choke saying the word home. Does everybody know where you live? She squeezes my shoulder. Only me, other teachers, the principal. I stare at the floor, speckled linoleum. Why can't there be an earthquake? Why can't I just be swallowed up? I won't lie. My home is Avalon now. The clock tick tocks, tick tocks. Okay, says Miss Garcia, but Deja, you can't just refuse an assignment and not turn it in. Sometimes I can change the topic. You don't have to write about summer vacation or Avalon, but you need to practice writing. Deja, it's important. Yes, ma'am. Don't say yes, ma'am, if you're just being polite. I'd rather you say, I'm going to work, being a good student. Yes, ma'am. Exasperated, Miss Garcia sighs. I clasp my fingers behind my back and squeeze them hard. You'll let me know how I can help. My mother talks about folks who are well-meaning. Sometimes well-meaning isn't enough, Deja, Ma says. Not writing about Avalon isn't going to help me. Sooner or later, kids will find out where I live, and those that don't want to speak to me won't. No one's got to be my friend. I turn to go. It's raining. Figures. It's a light, misty rain, and across the river, I see the new sparkly tower. In class every day, I'm going to be bothered by it. Why did Miss Garcia show us a picture of what used to be? Miss Garcia, I say, pointing. What's home got to do with a skyline? Well, that's our journey this month, figuring it all out. Home is our starting point for connecting with the past. Miss Garcia's expression is complicated, all mixed up with sadness, excitement, and dread. Maybe teachers really are smart. If she were a kid, she'd say, my secret, here's to find out. I walk quickly down the hall and leap the school steps. Ray and Lita will be worrying where I've been. Sabine waves, then climbs into a black SUV. Bye, Deja. I bet Sabine doesn't know gangs like SUVs. I bet it's her mother holding the umbrella over her. Ben is a walker. He'll find his own way home. He doesn't call my name, just holds up his hand. And I like that. Like he was checking to see if I was all right. I grin. Ben's goofy, getting wet in his hoodie and cowboy boots. I start running his